Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you are now tuned in to the Investor Show. As always, this is your gracious host, the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from a beautiful city and state on this nice Sunday of Denver, Colorado. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So for the people that are catching this live, um, I want to say thank you for coming in on this live today for me to talk a little bit about investing and all of the good stuff like that. But we got a very good episode today. We're going to talk about 88 million Americans, according to the IRS.gov, 88 million Americans received stimulus checks. You know, the $1,200 stimulus checks that everybody received. And uh, we're looking for some people sitting at home right now wondering, what do I do with it? Some people already spent it. But for some people, they're kind of wondering, what can I do with this money? How can I invest it? Why should I invest it? All the other great stuff. So today's episode, we're going to do exactly that. I'm going to give you guys three ways, and I'm going to break down these three ways. You can invest this $1,200, right? So we're going to talk about, and of course, if you're catching this live, come in, tell me where you're from, tell me where you're calling from. And I got... um you know, I'm going to call everybody out. Tell me where you're from. If you're catching us on Facebook, we're streaming on Facebook and YouTube right now. And y'all give me one second. I need to, at a three-minute mark, we're going to do the roll call as usual, right? I don't want to swim across the bottom there. Sorry about that. We're going to do the roll call here in a second. Y'all give me a second. Not in a second, but at the three-minute mark. But y'all give me one second. It's two things I forgot to grab before I came on to this live that I want to show you guys and girls. So we're going to have a very good live today. We're going to go over three ways, and we're going to break down the three ways. Then I'm going to give you guys and girls a bonus topic, too. Y'all going to get a bonus topic for the people that's coming in and catching the live today. So here we go. Here we go. We are going to do – what are we going to do? Um, We're going to talk about why, too. So – so don't uh, as you're coming in, tell me where you're from. So when we do the roll call, we're going to be able to see where you guys and girls are from. Right? So I'll give me one second. Let me go over here and grab my, uh, the two things that I was supposed to bring over here. It's down here in my office. Y'all give me one second. All right, I'm back. I'm back. So let me also, if you're not following me on YouTube, on Instagram, I mean to say not YouTube. Let me. I'm gonna give a shout out on my Instagram. One second. Swipe up to catch me live on YouTube. We're talking about three particular ways you can invest twelve hundred dollars. Some people stimulus checks. All right. All right, here we go. And there we go. So there we go. I want to give everybody an opportunity to come check me out live. All right, so I'm going to give you all something real quick. Also, I'm going to give you guys something real quick. This is something that I got pretty cool, right? I want to show you all something. Y'all ready for it? I got this in the mail today. I'm going to do another video on it, but I just want to share this with y'all guys because y'all are cool and all that good stuff like that. Look what I got today, y'all. I got a personal letter. Personal letter. I got a personal letter from Charles Payne of Fox Business. He has the show. I watch the show all the time. It come on Fox Business called um, Money Making with Charles Payne. Money Making with Charles Payne. I watched this show in the afternoon. I think it come on like 1 o'clock or something like that, uh, Mountain Time. But I watch this show all the time. 
And uh, I purchased his book and I did a review on his book here on the channel. And guess what? They were tuning in. They were tuning in. They reached out to me and they sent me a nice little cool little box of goodies. And they sent me a personal letter. They say, we see you and thank you for the feedback when you unbox Charles Payne's new book, Unstoppable Prosperity. We took the time on your feedback of the DVD. I sent you your assets and credentials to view the DVD online. I don't need a DVD anymore. Okay, I don't need a DVD player. <laughs> we also noticed in your kit you had a paperback book included. We would like to include you with two hardcover books. So gave me her phone number and everything. This is so nice. Thanks to Charles Payne from Fox Business. I appreciate this personal letter. That means a lot. I appreciate that. Charles Payne from Fox Business. You never know who's watching. So shout out to Charles Payne, Fox Business. Y'all check him out. Great show, great book, all of the good stuff like that. So I'm very, that was pretty cool. I thought that was pretty cool. So but anyway, let's get into our roll call. Let's get into our roll call. We got Miss Butterscotch in the house. How you doing, Miss Butterscotch? How you doing? Shouts out to Miss Butterscotch. We got Mr. Courtney Rogers saying good afternoon. Thank you. Kale, Kevin, if I'm saying that, Kev King, Kev King. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, good after day, uh, rainy day in Long Island, Long Island, New York. I don't know how to say your name, DTG31, but okay. Miss Butterscotch, she's always from Hampton Roads, Virginia. Nice. We got Yarn. He says, hello, Prince Live from Northern VA. What's going on, Yarn? Yarn, I hope I'm saying, I hope I'll be saying your name right, too. Courtney Rogers from Chicago. Shot Town is in the building. Um, Miss King, Mississippi. Okay, Kevin. Okay, all right. We got Mississippi in the house. Um, Jamar, he said, retired Navy Chief from Tulsa, uh, uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. What's going on there? I always love my veteran uh, natu uh, Navy veterans and brothers and stuff like that. So we're going to have a very good topic. Thank you for tuning in today. Miss Athena say, what's up, Prince? George is in the house. Hope things are going well for everyone. Thank you for tuning in. We got Deep Brooks coming from Bama. Nice. Clarence Duncan, he said, it's your boy from the tip, but Bahrain. That's my guy. They, you know, I'm glad to see some of my military brothers serving across the globe. He's out there in Bahrain. Thank you for tuning in, man. I appreciate it. Who else we got in here today? Kristen, okay, what's going on, Christopher? Houston, Texas, served with him too. A lot of military veterans in here. Old Nolan, he said, you are the smartest person I know. I have, I helped, that helped me out so much in life. Oh, that appreciate so much, Nolan. I appreciate that. Me and Nolan served together. Oh, I like to call him Uncle Nolan. He served, we served together out there in uh, Japan. We did a lot of time in Japan together. Oh, and Hawaii. Mostly Japan, though. But, uh, yeah, nice to see you in here, too. Thank you for checking me out. It's my volume low? My microphone? Is my volume low on my microphone? He said, is it me or is the volume low? I hope my volume is not low. Okay. So somebody said volume is good. Okay. Thank you. I'll try to keep my microphone right. Kev said, lazy Sunday sessions. What's up, Prince from DC? Nice, Kev. We'll have a good effort. Uh, what you call it? Uh, she said, that's good. I hope something good comes out of that, Prince. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, how you doing? Hi, she's been a long time supporter. Nice to see you in. Thank you, thank you. So what I'm going to do to get guys and girls, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to give this book away. I'm going to give a hardcover copy book away to a listener today. So um, I woke up. This is on my doorstep, right? They sent me two copies. They sent me a hardcover. They sent me a hard, two hardcovers, and I had a paperback already. But I'm going to... Um, Give this away today to somebody who's tuning in live. So, no, so y'all stay tuned. I'm going to ask a question or something. And I'm going to give this away. I'm going to send this. Uh, this is Unstoppable Prosperity by Charles Payne. Shout, shout out to him. I'm going to give this book away. And thanks you for tuning in. So, so anyway, guys and girls, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it today. So the first thing is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, when you look at investing always, you know, the best way to invest, the best way to read a financial report, you got to do it with the Investor Show official mug. I can never understand financial reports, but when I take a sip of water out of this Investor Show cup, man, it clarifies everything. <laughs> and also, guys and girls, the bonus topic today, we're going to do a Microsoft versus Apple 
comparison, stock stock comparison. So y'all give me some thumbs up. Y'all give me some like buttons. We're going to jump straight into it. Y'all ready to do this? I'm, I'm talking like I can hear y'all. I can, but I just can't hear y'all. <laughs> okay, we got some more people here. Uh, hold my bad. Click on the wrong one. Dervin said, um, is, oh, um, Michelle said, I want the book. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, Dervis says, what's up, Prince Honolulu in here? Okay, thanks. Nice, nice. Lawrence Fuller. Okay, what's going on, Mr. Lawrence Fuller? Thank you for tuning in. She said, I need that cup then. I'm telling you, man, it changes your life. The official mug is in the description box somewhere. It's on the channel. It's the only way to do it. So what else we got up in here? She said, uh, that mug is huge. Now, I think this... Like, my wife had this mug made. So, now, she got this made for me a long time ago. I just started using it, so it's a huge mug. But uh, I don't think the, the the official one is that big. So, but she got that one made for me. Um, Oh, yeah, I could give away a mug, too, huh? I could give away a mug. We're going to do that. We're going to say that for another episode. Faith Hill said, good evening. I'm ready for my book. I love your advice on the show mississippi's in the house okay faith hill all right nice you know max b that's my guy down there in new orleans y'all stay tuned so for the people that's catching it today i'm gonna give away max b in case the people who didn't hear uh one last time i got a personal letter here from fox paint um charles Payne from fox business um he appreciated me gave me a nice little personal letter and he sent me two hardcover books and uh, I'm going to give away his book today. Hardcover, hardcover too. I'm going to give away his hardcover book. We're going to do something in the topic today. We're going to have a discussion. We're going to ask a question. And the first person that answers the question, they are going to get this particular book for free. I'm going to mail it to you. You're going to give me your address. You're going to email me. You're going to have to email me your address. Your name, your address. And I'm going to mail it. I'm going to give it away. Shouts out to Charles Payne. Great book, by the way. I read it. I reviewed it. And he, uh, they reached out to me. So I'm going to give it away. All right? So y'all stay tuned today. So now I know I've been saying we're gonna get into the topic. Let's hurry and get into this thing. Uh, Fang, uh, Fangs this week. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the Fang. We're gonna talk about the MAGA. She said, "I need that book and the mug." I'm telling you, man. The mug, you can get them today, man. Ah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, let's get into the topic. According to the IRS.gov, over 88 million people received um stimulus checks right 88 million people received stimulus checks right twelve hundred dollars for a person five hundred dollars for a child twelve hundred dollars for a person five hundred dollars for a child is what people receive in their stimulus checks congratulations if you receive a stimulus check so now a lot of people are sitting at home and i got a lot of dms people's asking me hey prince 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 i got a question for you i said well, what was the question and everybody's kept asking me, Prince, I want to give you this, um, I want to give you this, uh, what you call it, right? I want to give this to your, um, what they said they want to do? They want, um, how can I invest this $1,200? What can I do with this $1,200? I got $1,200. What can I do with it? You know, should I just let it sit there or whatnot? So people are looking at, oh, can I flip it? Can I invest it? Can I do this? Can I do that? So we're going to talk about three ways you can do that with uh, your $1,200, invest your $1,200. So the first reason we want to get into, why do you need to invest your $1,200? This is why it is a must that you do something with your $1,200, right? Well, I'm not going to, I thought I was going to ask that question, but I'm not going to ask that question. I'm going to tell you that for later. But here's the thing. The whole purpose and the whole reason to invest is not to make money. It is to make money, but not to make, how much money can I make? It is to beat or match inflation. That's the whole reason why a person must invest. It's the whole reason why I wrote the children's books, Wesley Learns, because I want to say, hey, kids, no matter what you do, you have to invest. Why is it imperative that you invest? Some people say, oh, I want to make more money, blah, blah, blah. No, it is imperative that you invest due to this word here, inflation. Hopefully I didn't misspell that. No, I didn't. So inflation is the reason why we must invest inflation 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 ladies and gentlemen inflation moves at a rate of three percent annually three percent annually the price of goods and services goes up that means your rent that means the food is going up 
gas, cost of cars, clothes, shipping, everything is going up. So now we're going to talk about why uh, why does inflate? That's why inflation happens. It's the invisible tax. You can't see the inflation. Why can't you see the inflation? You can't see the inflation because nobody comes to you and say, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, the price of soda is going up. But look at it this way. When a lot of you guys and girls was in high school, how much did a can of Coca-Cola cost versus how much does a can of Coca-Cola cost today in a vending machine, right? You see how that price changed. Why did the price change? I remember you used to be able to take a dollar, and I used to almost get, I used to get a pack of cookies. Uh, I could get a can of soda for like 25, 50 cents. I could get a pack of cookies and a little bag of popcorn or whatever the case may be for a dollar. I used to be able to eat out of a vending machine for like a dollar or two. Now you walk up to a vending machine with a dollar, you're lucky if you get a pack of chewing gum. What happened? It is called inflation. The price of goods and services are continuously to rise. So the, that's why everybody must invest. Because now, if my money is not keeping up with inflation, I'm losing money. So by putting my money into my savings account, does my savings account keep, in, keep up with inflation? No. A savings account, you can't even get 1% with a savings account. Does my uh, checking account get uh, 1%? No, right? My CD, CDs, you lucky if you could get 2% in a year, right? You might better catch the special, you might get 2% because guess what did the Federal Reserve do in February? The Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, lowered interest rates. He cut the Fed interest rate. So that means interest rates are very low. Great for somebody who's buying a house. Great for somebody who um, is buying a car. Not so good for somebody who's trying to save money. Not so good for somebody who's using bonds or somebody who's using CDs. So if I have, if I'm trying to invest for my son, I'm trying to put money to the side for him in order for his money to grow, I must put it in some form of investing to match or beat inflation. The invisible tax, that's the whole purpose of investing is to beat, to match or at least beat inflation. Because if I'm not matching or beating inflation, I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm losing. I can't see it, but I can feel it. If I take $10,000 a day, put it into the ground, didn't touch it, 20 years from now, my son goes in the ground, gets that $10,000, guess what's going to happen? It's still $10,000, but he's going to lose purchasing power. Money loses purchasing power. Back in the day, you had $100, you can go to the grocery store. You can feed a house full of five people for a week off of $100. Nowadays, if you go to a grocery store with $100, you're lucky if you can feed yourself, <laughs> right? I'm, you know, I'm being a little facetious there, but you, I'm just getting to the point that the dollar is losing value, purchasing power, due to the price of goods and services going up every year. This is why if you got $1,200 and you have it in a savings account, is your savings account making 3%? Probably not. If it is, Please DM me. I would love to have a savings account making 3%. Is your checking account making 3%? Probably not. By putting the money under your mattress, is that making anything? No. Where can you place your money to where it can grow? That's the whole purpose of investing. So now I just talked to you why that was important. Now we're going to get into um, three ways that you can do this, and we're going to break it down. So before I do that, let me see what some of you guys and girls are saying. Kevin said, Prince Georgia, Prince Georgia virus cases spiked the weekend. I read, I can see a down week. That's true. We've seen the virus cases. Georgia opened up this weekend, and we're seeing virus cases spiking up. I mean, I don't get into the politics, but that sounds crazy to me. Faith said, I started dividend investing watching your show. Nice, nice, nice. We're going to get into that, too. Michael says, what's up, Toronto? Entering the money matrix. Nice, nice. What's going on, Michael out there in Toronto? Uh, Charletta. Hello from Mississippi. Cousin. Oh, so you're my cousin, Charletta? Mississippi cousin? Okay, nice. Proud dead. The invisible tax. Well said. Yes, I forgot who said it. So inflation is an invisible tax. You can't see you losing your money every year, but you're losing your money every year, right? You're losing purchasing power. What you was able to buy with $10,000 20 years ago, you can't do today. Even though you still got $10,000, $10,000 is $10,000, but with $10,000 can buy in 2020, it could have bought a whole lot in 2000, right? 
So we must find ways to invest. The, PP, the PPP loan is through June. My question is, what will happen when all these businesses, especially restaurants, after? How do we even eat with a mask on? <laughs> so that goes back, Kevin, what you're talking about. He's saying the PPP loan. The PPP loan is talking about the payment protection plan that was designed by the Department of Treasury, Stephen Munch, who is the Secretary of Treasury. And he's talking about these are loans that they're giving to businesses to keep them alive until we get back. He's saying, well, when we get back, what's going to happen? Kevin, what you're talking about is consumer sentiment. They just indicated consumer sentiment. They do the report on that like every month on the collegeboard.org. And consumer sentiment means that if the market was to open back tomorrow, is everybody going to rush out and everybody going to be at the Olive Garden just woo or at whatever restaurant, Capitol Grill or whatever restaurant you go to just hanging out? Man, I couldn't wait for happy hour. Some people will, but most people probably won't. People will probably slowly come back into the market. So, yes, consumer sentiment is low, right? Faith here, 50 cent, Coke, bubble gum, 10 cent. Think about it. Bubble gum used to be 10 cent. Coca-Cola used to be 50 cent. Now, you can't. You go to a vending machine now, you put a dollar in there, you might get a 16-ounce Coca-Cola. used to be 20 ounce. Now you get 16 ounces for $1.25. That's the invisible tax. That's inflation. This is why you must invest. So Charlotta, she says she's my cousin. Oh, okay. Well, nice to meet you. I don't think I've met you before. Doesn't not unless it's a different name. So anyway, let's get into it. So we now, Prince, you said it. Let's get into it, Prince. What are some ways I can invest my money? Now, this first way, y'all ready for the first way? Here we go. No. Hang on one second. Here's the first way. Pay debt. That's right. I said it. Investing into your debt. If you got a credit card out there with $10,000 on it, and you owe, and it's growing at 16% annually, and you got $1,200, and you're looking for ways to invest it, a guaranteed return on your investment is paying down your debt, right? Let's say me. Take me for a prime example. I owe $7,000 on my wife's car, right? I get $1,200. Instead of me going out here trying to figure out ways to flip it and burn it and do this and whatnot, the smartest thing you can do and to get a guaranteed return on your investment is to pay down the car. Whatever the smallest debt is, I love Dave Ramsey for this, Total Money Makeover, his seven baby steps. The first thing is you list out all your debt. Whatever debt is the lowest amount, I don't care what the interest rates are, whatever debt is the lowest amount. If you owe $500 on a credit card, you got $500 you owe on a loan, or whatever, $1,000 you owe on a loan, pay it off. Guaranteed return on investment. Prince, how is that a guaranteed return on investment? Because the interest you was paying to that loan is now coming to you now. That interest that you pay on that credit card is coming to you now. If your credit card is earning 16%, you buy a stock that makes 10%, you're still losing. And then say if you bought a stock that went down, now you lost 16%, you're losing 16% on your credit card, and you just lost your money on the investment. Guarantee return on investment, pay off your debt. Use it. If you got a little small debt that's just nagging you like a little gnat, get rid of it with the $1,200. Now, every month, instead of making that payment, you are now what you call it. So, and I want, put, I want to put a disclaimer out there. I know I talk about my mug. You know, those are investor show mugs. Those are merchandise. I'm just joking. I don't want nobody to come and sue me and say, man, I brought the mug and I couldn't read 10K reports any better. Um, it's, it's just a joke. You know, I don't want nobody to come buy a mug and then come sue me and say, man, you know, I got the mug and I can't even what you call it. So please, it's just jokes. That's my disclaimer. <laughs> so pay off the debt, ladies and gentlemen. Pay off the debt. If you got $1,200 and you owe on a credit card, you owe on some type of loan, you owe on your car, you owe on something and whatnot, use that money to pay off your debt. If you got $500 for your child, invest for your child, ladies and gentlemen. Invest 
for your child. Do not um, take that five hundred dollars and be like, you know what? I always want to get that wall painted, and you know what? I always want to get you didn't this money you weren't even supposed to have anyway. Do the child some justice. Put the five hundred dollars over there for your child. If you got some hard times, put a hundred dollars for your child and do what you got to do with four hundred. Think about your children. You talk. You taking any money for your children? Give your children something. So first thing I want to tell you: pay out the debt. Guarantee return on the investment. Guarantee. If I owe ten thousand dollars on a credit card and it's charging me sixteen percent, I put twelve hundred dollars on that. Guess what? Now I only owe what eight thousand eight hundred. I only owe eight thousand eight thousand eight hundred. The interest is less on eight thousand eight hundred than it is on ten thousand. Right. So whatever your smallest debt is, list out all your debt. Whatever your smallest debt is, put the twelve hundred dollars on the debt. Guarantee return investment. I know you're like, man, come on, Prince, man. I wanted to invest this, man. I had all these ideas. I was gonna do this and I was gonna do that. Now I'm giving you a way to get a guaranteed return on investment. So now, before we get into the next one, let's look at some of you guys and girls' comments. <laughs> uh Courtney saying a bottle of water is two to three dollars. <laughs> That's true. Lawrence said, do you think Nokia is a good stock to invest in? Lawrence, you crazy. Somebody asked me that one day. Hey, you think I should get Motorola? Why? Because it doesn't even compare to Verizon, AT&T. I, I, you know, that's just me. No, I'm, I'm not on the, oh, that's the struggle bus. They're over there struggling. They're trying to figure it out. Struggle bus stock. Get me Verizon. Get me AT&T. Maybe even get me T-Mobile. I'm playing with the current people who are winning. Winners focus on winning. Losers focus on winners. So, hey, I'm winning. I'm trying to focus on who's winning. Who's winning in this world? Can Nokia make a comeback? Maybe they can. Maybe they might, but that's too risky. No Nokia for me. Uh, William Voss said, hey, man, I got $500 left on my car. Thanks for the stimulus check. So uh, I don't know if you got – William Voss said he got $500 left on his car. So pay if you got the twelve hundred dollars, pay it off. If you haven't, if you already put the twelve hundred on it, and you got five hundred dollars left. Congratulations! Now your car is almost paid off. My car is paid off, but I grab drive a piece of crap two thousand seven Saturn View that need a paint job on the left hand side. So y'all don't pick at me when y'all see me. Uh, LH nineteen said, "Fax Prince can't really be free until you're debt free." Yes. So so people got come out with all these amazing ideas. That's the first one. We got two more to go though. The debt snowball, yes, that was made famous by Dave Ramsey. Shout out to Dave Ramsey. David Grant's a grip program. Yep, yep, that's a shout out to him. Great information. Uh, I will introduce myself and talk about my family at a later time. Yes, please send me an email at prince, P R I N C E, at childrenfinancialliteracy.org. Childrenfinancialliteracy.org. So, um, are very easy to find, or you can just DM me or, or whatever the case may be on Instagram or DM me on Facebook or email me. And uh, thank you. LH19, times like this, you are appreciating no debt. Yes, companies that have a high cash pile and little to no debt. I asked a question yesterday. I was a little embarrassed. I asked everybody, who had the most debt, Apple or Microsoft? Right? And, you know, and everybody was like, you know, everybody was almost 50-50 on it. I'm like, you know what? I taught y'all how to read 10K reports. You can easily look up anybody's 10K. I show, showed everybody how to do that, right? But we're going to go through that. That's all right. Debt-free is a is the best investment. Yes. Uh, doing Dave Ramsey right now, Financial Peace University, is well worth it. Yes, Dave Ramsey, that, it uh, definitely is a good one. Debt snowball. I did it. Failed a couple. Uh, it's a fail. Failed to cut up, failed to cut up my cards. I have learned better now. Yes. Get I mean, me, I hold on to my credit cards. You know, I put my son onto my credit card, like I told y'all. And I just hold on to it. I keep a small, very manageable amount. And that's it. Because I don't want to close it because I can go against my credit. I've had it for 12, 13 years. So it helps me build my credit. So I just uh it helps me hold on to my credit. I just like to hold on to it. He said, cut it up, you'll sleep better. <laughs> yep. But I only have one credit card. I have one credit card. I don't do no two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, none of that. Durbin Smith said struggle bus. Yes. For you guys and girls who are just tuned to me, I call it the struggle bus. The struggle bus 
is I'm trying to get to, I'm at point A. You are at point A. You're trying to get to point B, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all are trying to get to point B. Get on to, and you're trying to catch a ride. A lot of y'all talking about Nokia, Nokia, they got a flat tire, uh, the you know, the seats are broke, you know, um, you know, it's low on gas. That's what that company looks like. Versus you got a Verizon, they number one in the game, they're doing their thing, they're paying a nice dividend, all the other good stuff like that. And, you know, they here you go in a limo. I see a limo, then I see a a, a, a broken down car or whatnot. I'm gonna go get a limo. The for show though. I'm not gonna well, let me get in here and help this. See if you see if I can make it to plan B with you guys. No, too risky for me. I ain't with that. Uh Wayne Perkins said, My wife and I did the debt snowball forty thousand dollars free. Nice, nice. Miss Butterscott said, My mind uh, she said, uh, my car is an 08, uh, 07 too, but she's beautiful. Yes, my car is a uh yeah, I got an 07 Saturn view. I need a paint job, and I'm hopefully I can ride it to a die. Um, oh, uh, there you go. Oh, five Buick. Uh, I can't say serving for me, Prince. I like luxury. He said, I like, I like a little luxury. Ah, okay. That's all right. I'm not down to somebody who got a nice car. Cars are, everybody has their thing. Some people like to gamble. Some people like to drink. Some people like to play video games. Some people like to smoke. Some people like to, uh, whatever, right? Whatever you're into. Some people like watches. I got family members that love watches and rings and jewelry. I'm not knocking you for your thing. My thing is just not really cars, you know, too funny, right? But um, everybody has a thing. We're all going to die. Eventually, we're all going to die. I don't care if you're a vegetarian. I don't care if you uh, drink water and eat veggies all day. One of these days, you're going to die. So enjoy your life, you know, but in moderations. Apple. See, there you go. That is right. Apple has more debt than Microsoft. Apple reported a look at the 10K report of 2012, 2019. Look at the 10K report. You'll see they reported $108 billion worth of debt. Microsoft. Uh, oh, Michael said Otis, uh, Otis Academy was good stuff. Nice. Everybody out there, if you have kids, go to the ultrasacademy.com. Right, they're giving free. Uh, now they came onto the show. They're giving free financial literacy classes for children. Right, Jay Biz, what's up, my guy? I think he's out there in Seattle. Uh, she said you can do old and still be fly. Y'all don't even try to be fly. I want everybody to think I'm broke. So if y'all see me in the public, y'all probably think I'm homeless. I try to look as homeless as possible, unless I got somewhere to be. But most of the time, if I'm if I'm running to the mail, if I'm running to the post office or I'm running to the grocery store or something like that, I try to look as homeless as possible because people don't mess with me. They think, hey, that guy ain't got nothing. So he's struggling. So that's what I like. Don't say nothing to me. <laughs> right. Oh, seven clips. Got it. All right. So we're going to jump straight into the. um, Patrick. OK, so I have a nice car. Uh, Jameson Brooks said, would you recommend getting into debt to build credit? Do you mean like taking out a loan? Now, if you, if you have bad credit or no credit, you're trying to build your credit because you want to buy a house or whatever the case may be, something that I did, I did take out loans that I didn't need, but I only took out loans for like $500, $600. I put the money into my savings and over six, seven months, I paid it off. And then that was a paid off loan. I got it. When I brought a piece of land, I brought a cheap piece of land for like $3,000, and I had the cash. I could have just used my cash, but what I did, I went to the bank, took out a loan, brought the land on a loan, and then I slowly paid back the cash to the loan. I paid it off in like six or seven months. I took like a three-year loan, but I paid off in six or seven, eight months or whatever. So it went on to my credit report is paying off early or whatnot. So that's the only way to build credit. You got to go into debt. You got to go get a, a credit card, you know, uh, you know, unless y'all know something like that, that I don't know, but you got to get into some form of debt, whether it's a credit card, a loan or whatever. People with great credit scores, I mean, they got into debt. They had it for a long time and they get a, did a good job of paying it off. That's all good credit means. She said, oh, we're supposed to look up, look them up. Yes, look them up. Come on, Miss Butterscotch, look it up. You're supposed to look it up. I taught everybody 
and I taught everybody how to fish. So when I asked that question, who, which company has the most debt? People are there like, Microsoft? Apple? Do you mean, did, come on, man. Simple question. Y'all can look that up. We don't look this up about 50, 11 times on this show. So I got to start my position in Raytheon. Hmm. Would it be a good time? It's going to be a big week next week. We got the Fang. We got the MAGA. Right? All right, Miss Butterscotch. All right. So now let's get into option number two. Y'all ready for it? Y'all ready for it? Here we go. Boom. We got stocks, right? Y'all give me one second, too. Option number two is stocks. You can invest into stocks. And what I mean by investing in the stocks, you can invest in the stocks to be able to make a 2 to 3% return on investment. Now, with this, I'm going to go into three levels. I'm going to give you a conservative person a high-risk person, and a low-risk person, and I'm going to show you, and I'll give you an example of each and why. Now, bear me one second. I'm pulling up my other string that I want to share with y'all for the last topic. So number two, stocks. So we're going to go over a person who's very risky, a person who's conservative, and a person who wants uh, who wants uh, who wants a medium? Like I want a little bit of risk, but I don't want too much risk. You know things like that, right? So here we go. Here, right. Y'all bear with me one second here. All right, so now we're going to get back to the stocks, right? We're going to talk about different types of stocks. First, we're going to talk about a person who wants little to no risk, but they want a return on investment. You can go with a consumer staple that pays dividends, right? Consumer staple that pays dividends. Now, what I mean by consumer staple that pays dividends, a consumer staple is Coca-Cola is a consumer staple. Meaning when the economy was up last year in 2019, when the economy was booming, people was buying Coca-Cola. 2020, when everybody's struggling, people are still buying Coca-Cola. Some people might be putting some rum in it, some people might be putting some uh, rum in it. Some people might be doing whatever, but Coca-Cola is a consumer staple, meaning people will buy it regardless of what's going on in the economy. When it's a recession, when we're booming, people will buy con uh, Coca-Cola, right? Now, when you look at, now also on top of that, you have dividends. Coca-Cola historically has paid dividends. It's a dividend arist it's aristocrat. It's a company, it's a consumer staple that has been paying money for the last couple of years. Another one, Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble is another consumer staple. Cleaning supplies, things that we use every day that we don't even think about, people will use regardless of what's going on in the economy. What are products that people will use regardless of what's going on in the economy? And also, what will people do? right? Consumer staples that pay dividends. Coca-Cola pays dividends. Coca-Cola pays 3% in dividends. And what was inflation rate? 3%. Inflation. So there you go. Now, some people are talking about tissue, Coca -Cola, uh, hand sanitizer, Clorox, blah, blah, blah. Yes, people use those. Right now, they're just spiking. They're spiking because everybody going crazy because of coronavirus, but they will simmer back down. But Clorox itself is a, is a considered a um, uh, cons it's considered a consumer staple. No matter what's going on in the economy, people will use people will clean their house. Another thing people would do, regardless of what's going on in the economy, they will smoke cigarettes. 
Now, I don't know your personal feelings, but Philip Morris, people will smoke cigarettes regardless of what's going on in the economy. People will drink Coca-Cola products, consume Coca-Cola products, regardless of the economical times. People will use cleaning supplies of Procter & Gamble, regardless of the economical times. These are companies that people will collect dividends regardless. They're paying dividends. They're nothing fancy about them. They kind of flatline. They kind of go up a little bit. They go up a little bit. But guess what? They're a little bit more conservative. That's probably like your mid-range person. Now, take somebody who said, well, Prince, I don't want that much risk. I want a little bit less risk. S&P 500 index. If you're a conservative person and you want to invest, S&P 500 index. That's on the lower level. S&P 500 index, you get the top 500 companies in America, it pays a dividend, and you just forget about it, right? Notice, nobody is talking about will the stock market recover. Everybody is talking about when the stock market will recover. So that means that a person who don't know anything that's been, uh, and they just buy, what you call it, right? Um, when they buy dividends, I'm mean not dividends, but when they pay, um, Dividends, they pay their dividends every quarter. You're going to collect the dividend. You're going to get the top 500 companies in America. You can do that with the SPY, SPY, Vanguard, VOOO, Charles Schwab, SWPPX, Fidelity. I don't know the stocks off the top of my head, but you catch the drift. You have IVVV, which is iShares version of the S&P 500, the top 500 companies in America and you're collecting the dividends. That's conservative. You want a little bit more risk? You go with a consumer staple, Coca-Cola, Proxy & Gamble. Those are things people are going to be using regardless of what's going on in America. Now, if you want to take a little bit more risk, Prince, I want to go a little bit higher risk than that. I, 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 you know, I, you know I'm, I'm feeling myself. I want a little bit more. Who's going to really grow? Now, you go off into the technology sector. You find the biggest company in the technology sector, sector, who has the most total assets, who has the biggest cash pile, who has the biggest name and brand with the smallest amount of debt, using the debt to income ratio, using the return on equities ratio or return on assets ratio, and you pick the biggest and the baddest boy out there in technology. My belief is Apple. Not only is Apple big and it's bad, if Apple today returns back to where it was before this whole coronavirus happened that's a 15 percent return on investment not including dividends if apple just got back to its high that it was at in february before the coronavirus happened which was like 327 dollars if it get back to its high you will make a 15 percent return on investment not including your dividends and people don't remember apple used to trade for 700 dollars before the 2014 split and it wasn't even worth a trillion dollars back then. People are like, Prince, do you think Apple can go to $700? I'm like, uh, it was at $700 back in 2014, right? So here we go. Now you have, now you want to be like, Prince, I want some more risk. I want something even riskier. Want to get even riskier? My risky, spicy boy, Uber. Uber is $29 right now, $30. I think I brought it when it was like $25. It's an unprofitable company, but it's the number one company and the number one brand with the biggest total assets in a brand new sector. It can potentially make it. But that itself is very, very risky because it's an unprofitable company. We don't know how it's going to do. All the companies I named earlier were profitable companies that pay dividends that are consumer staples in our household. Right? Let me tell you guys and girls something that I learned about total assets in my latest book that I read that I'm going to share with you guys and girls. Total assets are important because it tells how big a company is. And when it tells you how big the company is, it shows you how you cannot compete. If you and I, if everybody that's on this live, they're telling me it's 50 people that's catching me live right now, right? 50 people, if we all got our money together, in order to compete with Coca-Cola, we need about $48 billion to even get on their radar and be a big competitor in the Coca-Cola and the soda industry. So for prime example, you 
by a company being so big, it makes it hard to compete. And if we start to do a good job, they're going to come and buy us up anyway. And if we don't buy them, they're going to allocate all their resources to destroy us, a.k.a. <clears throat> vitamin water. Pepsi, they created Gatorade. I think Pepsi brought Gatorade. All of a sudden, Coca-Cola got Powerade. Right? What's Pepsi water? Pepsi got Aquafina. Here come Coca-Cola with Dasani. Right? So total assets, how big a company is, it gives them a competitive advantage over everybody else. So now that you have a bigger com advantage over everybody else, you can buy up the little guys. So I don't want to run off into that. Very conservative S&P 500 index, IVVV from iShares, Vanguard, VOOO, SPY from Standard & Poor. No, that's Spider. Spider is SPY. Uh, the owner of SWPPX, that's Charles Schwab. Now, I want a little bit more risk. I want to pick a particular stock, but I don't want too much risk. Go with a consumer staple that pays dividend, i.e. Procter & Gamble, i.e. Um, Coca-Cola. Prince, I want more risk. You go to a technology company. You go to the biggest and the baddest boy with the most cash on the block, which is Apple. Pays a dividend, and if it just goes back to where it was, 15% return on investment. Apple will be over $300 by next summer. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure that out, right? Prince, why do you say that? I'm not guaranteeing a stock price, right? But I'm saying if everything goes well, we know by next summer we'll be out of, we'll probably have a new president or the same president or whatever, but we, we're going to be out of this whole bear market. Apple will be Apple, right? Apple will be Apple. And it goes over $300. It goes back to where it was. You made a 15% return on investment. Now Apple is off to the races to $400, $500, whatever the case may be. You made 15 off your $1,200. Now you probably made somewhere between 15 to 20% within a year. All right? And if you want a spicy boy, something like an Uber. Now, before I get into number three, we're going to get into the third way to do it. We're going to get into some of you guys and girls' discussion. Let's see what y'all are talking about here in this discussion section. Okay. Okay, Ms. Butterscott said, was the question for the book? Okay, so we're going to do a question. I'm giving away this book today. I'm going to mail it out to somebody. I'm going to ask a question, uh, I say, in the next five minutes. You know what? Everybody get ready. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and get ready to give away this book to somebody. So y'all get ready. In the first comment, now if you was on a, if you got a, if you comment on Facebook and come in slow, if you comment on Instagram and it came in, I don't think Instagram, but you coming on YouTube or your Wi-Fi was slow, I don't know. I'm going to ask this question right now and whoever puts it in the comments, whoever gets it right, we're going to look at we're going to say, um, what you call it? We're going to um, give it away to the first person that comment. The question is, everybody get ready. Give everybody a chance to get ready. Get ready. If you if you tweeting, if you're doing whatever, if you're catching this live, here it is to give away the book. Right? Y'all ready? Here we go. On average, what? is the inflation rate that I previously stated. What is the percentage of the inflation rate that I previously said at the beginning of the show? Type it in in the comment box. The first person that type in the percentage will get this book. All right. Kevin said, thoughts on commercial real estate. Many companies have proven to work 100% remote. Uh no, I'm especially not right now. I don't even know who how people are paying their, their their leases, right? That's why I'm not staying away from REITs. That's why I'm in DRV. I'm not, I'm holding off on real estate. Because I think they're next. 25 million Americans in the last four weeks have filed for unemployment. And by everybody filing for unemployment, I'm kind of wondering who's gonna pay for the rent, mortgage, and lease. With places like Cheesecake Factory losing all their profits and stuff like that, who's gonna pay the lease? I'm I'm good on that. I'm holding off. And you're right. This proved that a lot of people can work from home. <laughs> oh, she's talking to Kevin. Confidential. Okay. Let 
Greshe, little to no risk would never make a dime. Yes, you're right. You got to get out there and get us some, right? So it says, wow. Faith Hill says tissue. Yes, tissue is one. But I don't know who the big tissue brand is. Off the top of my head, they could, you know, people will, yeah, people will buy tissue regardless. That, that's a consumer staple. That falls into household goods. People will clean their house, uh, smoke cigarettes, drink drinks, or whatever the case may be. Um, I I like my Chevy CVX stocks paying good dividends. Chevron. So Chevron CVX stocks. I'm not too crazy about automotive, but um, you know, I haven't heard too. Definitely not a Ford fan, but hey, haven't looked too much about Chevron. Does Coke pay dividends every month, every three months? Uh, Coca-Cola is quarterly, quarterly dividends. True that S&P 500, cool. How do I start stock market investing? Yes, you got to build a brokerage account. You got to build a brokerage account, use an E-Trade or a TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab or whatnot. Um, you set up an account, it'll probably take you about 15 to 20 minutes. You got to transfer money into the account. And then you can, um, as a new person starting off, start off with the index, SWPPX, boo. Um, you know, if you're small, you don't know what you're doing, then you build your way up and you get individual stocks, you know, things like that. Build a portfolio. Don't look to buy stocks. Look to build a portfolio. It could be a small portfolio of $1,000. It could be a small portfolio of 500 Look to build a small portfolio. JBiz, what do you think about AMD? Yeah, AMD was the hottest stock last year, I think. Haven't looked at AMD a whole lot. I haven't looked into it, Jamie. JB, so I can't give a hundred percent pin on it. Oh, she's talking about that. Okay. Uh Courtney, Courtney says Berkshire A. Oh, cool. BRK dot A. BRK dot A is Berkshire Class A, man. Those company like a quarter million a piece. Yeah, that's <laughs> Gus A, but watch Prince video before buying anything. Okay, Gus A, appreciate that. Oh, JBiz, vitamin water. Yes, Coca-Cola. You remember when they brought vitamin water? Coca, you know, vitamin water was kind of building a little name, and they had a couple of artists. Y'all remember Metal World Peace came onto the show, and he said he turned down equity in vitamin water, and Coca-Cola came and brought them. That's what they do to the little boys. Check out Fizz. Okay. One second. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. I'm going through all the comments, y'all. Gus, Gus, S, S, P, X, S. That is the short. That's my little insurance policy in my portfolio. S, P, X, S goes up as the market goes down, right? I put a little bit, not a whole lot of my portfolio because I know the market's going to go up. We might take another dip. If we take another dip, I'll sell my S, P, X, S. If we, we don't take another dip and we just run off to the market, I'll just lose the money I put into my XPXS, just like an insurance policy. JB said, future's about to open. Yeah, that's true. Oil is a wrap. Y'all remember what I told y'all about oil? I've never been an oil fan. I don't know anybody that's jumping. I'm, I'm, I'm not smart enough to invest in oil. He said, uh, he said, you made 20. He said, oil made 20 G last week. I love it when it goes down. OCU. Or maybe you're betting against it. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, Charlotte said, how do you feel about buying stocks via Cash App? Yes, I did a video on that. Yes, buying stocks via Cash App, you can buy fractional shares. So you can invest into an Amazon, Google, Apple for a dollar, you know, with the Cash App. You know, um, I haven't heard anything bad, seen anything go wrong with them. But the good thing, the only reason why it's good with the Cash App is fractional shares. Um, I know Robinhood was talking about doing it. They released it on some co- platforms. Some accounts have them, but not all of them. Um, but I believe the big boys are going to get it too. But thing I'm good about Cash App, you can buy fractional shares with Cash App. You know, for a dollar, you can put in two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, and buy a piece of Google. Google costs over a thousand dollars. Amazon is over two thousand dollars. You're like, man, I don't have two thousand dollars, but I got twenty. Can I put something on it? And you can do that with the Cash App. So from what I've seen them do it, I've done it. I've done videos for it. I brought a couple of dollar stocks over there, and whatnot. So I think it's a good thing. Oh, Ashley says she's ready. Okay, let's see who got it. DHT is about to get rich. I don't know what DHT is. We'll probably come back to that later. Good said he's getting ready. Nice, uh, nice, sir. One, one of my trading boards only trades oil and kills it. Yeah. 
That's why I'm talking about it. So the answer, Kevin. Kevin got it right. Congratulations. Kevin, please email me. I'm going to write my email address in, prince at childrenfinancialliteracy.com. Dot org, I'm sorry. I just posted into the group, into the chat, Kevin Prince at childrenfinancialliteracy.org. Email me your name and your address. And I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the post office and mail this off. Hopefully I don't get the coronavirus trying to mail this off. You know, I'm gonna wipe it down. It's gonna be corona free. Right, no corona, but you're getting a hardcover copy. This was sent to me by Charles Payne of Fox Business. I had the paperback version, I read the paperback version, and he saw the show. Thanks for tuning in to the show, Charles. And uh, I always love seeing he's an inspiration to me. I love to see him on Fox Business, I watch his show all the time. So, very inspirational guy. Um, I'm going to see his book. You got the hardcover, hardcover copy coming to you, case covered. All right. Thanks for tuning in, Kev. 3%, it was the answer to the inflation rate. I see some other people wrote down 3%. Yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. Good said it. Y'all got it, but Kev got it. Athena, yeah, y'all got it too, Miss Butterworth. He said, Kev came up. Yeah, Kev got it. Boss, you got it. I see all y'all got it too. That's good. That's good. I'm glad to see y'all listen. <laughs> Miss Butterworth said, damn it. <laughs> uh, Easy said 2%. No, it's 3%. Uh, 1.76. Michelle, where you get that number from? Do you just make that number up, Michelle? Or did you take the number I said and divide it by two? Or two and a half or something? At least it did. Yeah, Kev got it. So, I wasn't here, but I guess it sounds right. Uh, I should get the book. Pretty good book. Shout out to him, and I, and I definitely appreciate him for supporting. You know? Uh, okay, gush. Man, y'all are, y'all are in here today. Everybody saying grads. Venetia know it's three percent. It was three percent. Uh, Janisha says she enjoys my content. Thanks. Um, thoughts on? We have to get into that later. Then Kayla said two point three. No, I just missed a huge short on futures open. The candle was wild. Okay, he's over there trading the futures. The futures market is open. Thoughts on TTQQQ this week? Ooh, I can't say this week, man. It's gonna be a big week. We got the fame. We're gonna talk about the fame in the maga. But we're going to get into option number three. Right? Your thoughts on Acorn? Acorn's pretty good. I don't, I'm not a big fan of it because it has a little fee involved, but it's not bad. In the investing world, ladies and gentlemen, you're always going to have good, better, and best. The fact that you're investing is good. Can it be better? Yes. Can you have the best? Yes. Acorn, to me, I don't believe it's the best, but it's not bad either. It's good. She said, great, I keep buying fractional shares. Yep, buying a little shares. Better than nothing. Better than nothing. <laughs> she said, I thought it was 3%, but I was afraid to answer. See, you know what? See, come on now. You're supposed to be my cousin, Charlotte. Come on now. And I think, Prince, is that my dad? I think that might be on my daddy's side. But yeah, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. Closed mouths don't get fed. He said, that's fire. What's the name of the book? Is it on Amazon? I think it is. It should be. The name of the book is Unstoppable Prosperity. Learn the strategies of how I use for years to beat the market. It's good beginner inter intermediate investor. So you got to do some reading, though. I did a review on it. Pretty good stuff in here. So, yeah, I'm giving that away. Shots out to Charles Payne. I know I don't say it about 15 times. But for the people that are just tuning in, I got this book from Charles Payne, and they sent me a handwritten letter. They sent me a handwritten letter with uh, two hardcover copies. So I want to give one away on the show. LOL, my son, I'm cooking and listening. She said, I'm cooking and listening. <laughs> 
It's okay. Max B, now you have to start a book club, Prince. Yeah, I know I got to start a book club, you know. Yeah, they sent me uh, Max B. Yeah, you know, they they checking out the show. They sending me books and stuff like that. So um, I definitely appreciate it. Hold on. Let me make sure this book ain't autographed. Make sure. I don't want to give away my autographed book. Nobody, I don't want care to get it in the mail and be like, hold on. Oh man, I got the autograph copy. <laughs> but uh anyway, I don't I don't I don't care about that. And thanks for y'all supporting and tuning in. Portland, Oregon, thanks for doing a weekend show. I'm gonna have to do a weekend show because y'all was DM me saying, Prince, I never can catch you because I'm at work. So um I'm in here quarantining, so I do videos while everybody else is at work. But um that's why I kind of did a weekend show. This bus guy said, Yes, I probably would have to now, right? Futures are already green. High, great show. All right, so now let's get into option number three. Option number three, ladies and gentlemen, real estate. Can you buy real estate with about $1,200? Can you buy real estate with $1,200? What can you do in real estate with $1,200? Can you buy a piece of land for $1,200? Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is yes. Yes, you can. So I am going to... Before I, I'm going to share my stream with you guys. Here we go. You can buy land with $1,200. Got to do a little digging. So here on my stream here, it says Moonlight Landing. Brand new cheap property for sale. I got this email. Uh, brand new cheap property for sale in... Arizona. Now it's in the middle of the desert or whatever. So here they got an average 0.33 acres each, one acre total. Right? They telling me that uh the land is $9.70 each for taxes. The total wholesale price is $1500 for all of these. Total wholesale for all three pieces of land. So they got three pieces of land. 0.33 acres each that they're selling for $1,500 with an annual tax fee of $9.70 each. I can hit the buy now button, right? So this is an acre of land in the middle of Arizona that's going for $1,500, ladies and gentlemen. So you can buy real estate with your stimulus check. You can buy a piece of land, ladies and gentlemen. You could also do a REIT, a real estate investment trust. A REIT is pretty much like a mutual fund for real estate, right? Second, you can bet against real estate. Real estate market may be having some dark times in the next six months. A lot of people in a lot of forbearances are going through the roof. According to the NBA.org, which is the Mortgage and Brokers Bankers Association, forbearances are going through the roof, right? 25 million Americans are filing for unemployment. $1,200 stimulus check was put out. People are hurting. Can people really pay rent, mortgage? You know, people looking to buy a house right now? JP Morgan, the largest lender of mortgages, just came out and said, you got to have a 700 credit score along with 20% down if you want to buy a house. They just tighten up the ropes on lending. This could hurt real estate. You can bet against real estate for $25 with DRV. You can bet against real estate. You can invest in it. You can buy yourself a piece of land. And you can get a real estate investment trust. That's another option you can do. Right? Janina said, I never would have thought about land with $1,200. You can do it. That's why you tune into the Investor Show. Number one show, not on YouTube, not on Facebook, but in the world. <laughs> but yes, and I just showed you guys and girls where land was being offered for that, right? Right?
Uh, how long would you recommend to hold a short on real estate? Kevin, what I do, I buy DRV. It goes up. I sell it, put the money in cash, buy it again. Sell it, put the money in cash. But you can, I would say no more than six months. No more than six months. Easy said, do you have a book? Yes, I have three books. For all y'all don't know, I have three books uh, called Wesley. The we but they're children's books, Easy. They're children's books. I have three books, you know, available everywhere. Hardcover, paperback, ebooks, you now Amazon, iTunes, Barnes and Nobles. They're in schools, some everywhere, libraries. I, I kind of lost track a little bit, but there's some everywhere, you know, Europe and uh, Japan, all the kind of places I've seen pictures from, uh, stuff like that, Hong Kong. So, yes, I do have books. J. Biz, I'm trying to get me a house this fall, too. Corona free house. <laughs> Kevin said, and thanks for the book. Thanks for the book. Look forward to more giveaways. Yes. I need to get back to giveaways. I used to give away Wesley Learns books. I need to get back to that. I need to, you know, show my appreciation for y'all more. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give this away. Kev, shoot me that email. So I have you what you call it. JR said, hi from Los Angeles. Nice. JR, thanks for tuning in. Easy, yes. Okay, she's talking to him. Yeah, she's putting out the books. Wesley learns to invest. Wesley learns to invest. Wesley learns about credit. Uh, yes, Miss Butterscotch do have a whole series. You know, Miss Butterscotch does have the whole series. I show them to you guys. Oh, Miss Cherry. Oh, you don't. You should already have the books. You supposed to be my cousin. You supposed to already been had these books a long time ago. But yeah, my first book came out in twenty fifteen. Second book came out in 2017, and the last book came out last year. Three books. Uh, Wesley, you know, that's my son that y'all see. He's probably upstairs doing whatever. But, um, but yes, those are books. The world's first children's book on investing. I published it in 2015 by myself, completely independent, and uh, it's done great for me. Second book was hosted by Famous Amos. The third book features NFL Hall of Famer Terrell Davis as a character. Shout out to him for supporting me. So uh, doing what a lot of people wouldn't have done. He he helped put me on a whole new platform. I thank y'all for that. So get that whole series. Introduce your kids to these topics at the youngest age possible. Kids should not be at 18, 19 years old figuring out what credit is, figuring out what insurance is, figuring out what um, investing is when they're grown people in their 30s and 40 years old. No, introduce these topics to these kids at a young age, the youngest age possible. Don't mean that they got to understand like the back of their hand, but they should understand the principles and concepts, investing, credit, insurance. I don't care if they become a doctor, they would have to know investing, credit, and insurance. If they become a school teacher, investing, credit, insurance. If they become a plumber, they got to know about investing, credit, and insurance. So introduce these kids, topics to your kids. Get these books, support the platform. I tell people all the time, don't donate to me. If you like what I do, you want to support me, grab the books. You can get a paperback, you can get an ebook, which is dirt cheap, or you can get an audio book. Audio books are on iTunes, I think it's on Spotify, Tidal, whatnot. You can go out there and search it and you'll find an audio book. It's on Audible. You know, it's on the largest platforms. You can download an audio book for $2 and support me. Because I want the numbers of the sales. I don't care about the royalty cut. I do, but I'm really not crazy about that. In order for me to do more and to write more, I'm writing my fourth book now. So in order for me to get people involved and people to be interested in, in you and whatnot, they want to know your numbers. How many have you sold? Right? So definitely appreciate that. Uh, Easy said, thinking about writing a book to show veterans how to get their benefits. Ooh! Easy. You got to do that. You got to do that. Easy. I don't know you, but you need to do that. You got to do that, man. It's a lot of veterans out there trying to figure out veteran benefits, VA benefits, VA claims, stuff like that. That's a smart one, easy. I got a lot of veteran buddies, and it's probably a lot of veterans tuned in. Do that. Okay, she said. This brother's guy said, I have all of them twice. Yes. Twice? You got all the books twice? I appreciate that. I didn't know that. Do you have an online class? No, I don't have any. I haven't done a course yet. I've been talking about doing it. 
I just don't want to throw something together and just be like, oh, this is a good way for me to just make some money. No, I don't, you know, people write me all the time about doing courses. I want to tell everybody, hey, Wes. Hey. Say hey. Look down here. Hey. No, microphone sitting there. Hey. All right. Uh, okay. Charlotte said, sorry, I just learned about you. Cool, cool. Miss Buscott said, I'm your cousin. <laughs> she, you might be. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't even seen your face. I didn't know you. I think I know your name. I think I. Yeah, you just see your name in your email when you got the books. That sounds great, easy. Yep. Do it. Stop thinking about it. Do it. Start writing it. If they don't want to publish you, publish yourself. You got to do it. But easy. Before you write a book, you have to build your name. Build build what you're talking about. Don't think you're just going to write a book and everybody's going to buy it. Put some money to the side to market. Build your Facebook page or Instagram or Twitter and start posting stuff. Start building. While you're writing, you don't have to write the book, then bring it out. Build you a little Facebook. You probably already got it. If you don't have it already, have your social media. Start talking about veteran benefits now. But come to go to expert for that. So as soon as that book drops, people are going to get it like hotcakes. I'm going to have a copy. And think about it. Maybe not many people in DOD going to buy that. Or you can do a connection, do a business deal with the DOD to help kids and do a, do a deal with the Veterans Affairs to like, hey, I got this book together. You can get them to get in with you maybe and to be able to get that book together. Get it out. Um, JR said, buying any stocks lately, waiting for the dip again. I'm not. No, nah, I'm, I'm getting in. I'm getting a little bit here and there. I got some Apple. Uh, I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to get me a call option. What you doing, man? You Spider Man? Yep. Yeah. I know, man. You the you the man. You the man, Wes. You the man. You you my dog. So yes, I'm still buying a little bit here and there. Gr, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna buy a June call option for three hundred dollars strike price. A June call option for three hundred dollars strike price on Apple. But Scott says, do it. Kevin, Prince, got to ask you. Got to ask your, okay. Got to ask your think. We'll see lower lows. Are we headed towards a V-shaped? Rec- you okay, man? Yeah, it's going to be Spider-Man. Oh, you think you okay. But you got to be Spider-Man right now, Wes. Mm-hmm. So I can keep it Okay, got it. Um, lower lows. We headed for a V-shaped recovery as they open the market back up. I don't think so. Consum- you got Kevin. Look at consumer sentiment. Consumer sentiment report we just went out over on Friday. Customers is, is low. Nobody is like, man. As soon as that gym open up, I'm on the bench press. People are not thinking that way. People are not like, man, I used to go eat out every Friday. When the gym opened up, I'm going to eat six, eat out six days in a row. People are not thinking that way. People are slowly looking to get back into the economy. They're not rushing back into the economy. They're like, I think, let me tip my head around the corner. Is it safe? Is it this? So I think the kind of, I don't, I don't think it'll be a V shape. I think the market would be happy, but I don't see a V, like everybody's going to rush into the market. But Kevin, look at it this way. Notice, nobody is talking about is the market going to recover. Everybody know it's a hundred. It's like a ninety-five percent chance we're going to be at higher highs by next summer. Now, would there be another dip on the way to that higher high? I'm not smart enough to realize that. If I had to statistically break it down, I would say a thirty percent chance. So I'm focused on the winners. I can't predict if there's going to be another dip. I think we should be lower than what we are now. I think unemployment looks bad. I think real estate looks bad or whatnot. But I'm on the winning side, which is the bull. We know the bull will win in the long run. I'm in it for the long run. So here we go. This is what happens when you let your kids watch too much Spider-Man and they want to jump around to see the good shit. I have four kids. I will order them tonight, God willing. Appreciate that. Shout out to Gush A. And if you want to Email me photos, DM me photos on Facebook and uh, Instagram, or you know, email me and I'll definitely post them up on Miss Butterscotch. If you got pictures you want to post, 
I'll post the pictures as well. I'll post them up on our social media, uh, Wesley Vern. So, you know, everybody appreciate that. She said, uh, yep, I brought them from Amazon and wanted them autographed copies. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. She brought all three of them twice. So she got the hardcover and she got the paperback. Nice. Uh, Jenny say so. Uh, Jenny, she say so cute. Oh, that, that's Wesley in real life, y'all. Gush a wash his hands. Wash your hands and invest, everybody. Oh, everybody saying hey, Wesley. Hey. Yep. Hey, I'm yes, that's that's Spider Man, everybody. I'm Spider Man. I'm Spider-Man. okay. Out of all the places he could be, going to give the first set to my goddaughter. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you for uh, supporting. Thank you. Uh, Tropical Portland. I brought AMD at $10, sold it at 46 because of the corona. Felt smart, but now I feel dumb since it's at 55 No, you made, you made money. Not, not, not right now, Wes, okay? You put that, up. You put that back, okay? No, you, you made money, you know? You know, because if you would if it would have went down to five dollars, you would have felt like a genius. That happens all the time. But if you sell a stock, put it on your watch list. Everybody's laughing. <laughs> uh, Wesley's fortunate to have you as a father. Yeah, I'm fortunate to have Wesley as a son. He he he's all right sometimes. Wesley just flying around the back. Yeah, that's why he comes down. He really thinks that he's Spider Man, Spider Man, in real life. So, yeah, that's yep. That's uh, that's Wes. So with American so high, would you invest into the Canadian stocks? Now, I ain't, I ain't, first of all, I don't know enough about the Canadian market. So I'm American, and I, I know more about the American market than I know about Canadian markets or whatnot and Asian markets. Yes, there's probably some opportunities there, but I don't know the market as well. But there's always a bear, a bull in a market. You can find some opportunities here too, Jason. Is it, it, the market is not so high that I got to go, you know, take some crazy risk and invest into something in Denmark. You know what I mean? This is yeah, yeah, that's everybody talking about Wes. Bitcoin success. If you are a bull on the market, this is your chance to buy. If you are a bear on the market, this is your time to sell. Yeah, you can, you know, if you don't believe the market is going to go up, you, I mean, think about it. If you're a short term person, if you invest in for the next five years, you're looking five years down the line, you need to go ahead and uh, get on this train and in it for the long run. And you'll be happy in five years or two years by next year. Next summer, we're going to be out of this bear, I believe. I'll be biting my nails of next summer. So like I said, my next move is going to be $300 strike call prices, expiration date of June on, what you call it, on Apple, right? Uh, Charlotte says, hi, Spider-Man. <laughs> Wells Fargo or Citibank, I would go with J.P. Morgan. I probably would choose J.P. Morgan over there. Now, I do have Bank of America in my portfolio, but, you know, um, but I, I brought Bank of America, and I I have, I sell calls on them. I brought Bank of America for about $24. I'm down on it, but I have sold calls on my Bank of America stock because I own like 100 and some shares in the portfolio. So I sell I sell shares at about twenty four fifty, so I've been making money that way by selling calls on it. So, yeah. Oh, you already knew what I was going to say those hunter. All right, so we went back over that. So Kevin, congratulations on winning the book tonight. Kevin won a book this afternoon or evening, wherever you may be from, right? Um, a place, a company I have used is called Moonlight Landing, right? 
Moonlight Landing, I've used them. I brought about three, four properties from them. Um, that's why I just showed you guys and girls. Or you can maybe find some cheap land online. Uh, they're not the most desirable pieces of land, but how I buy, I did a video on this, and how I buy the land to make sure it's real. I always buy the land with a credit card because I know if I buy it with the credit card, if I don't get the deed within 30 days, right? If I don't get the deed within 30 days, then I can reverse payment on a credit card. So now you can go get a lawyer to do it. That's just my way to get around it. I'm like, okay, I bought a land. I write it in writing, have my money, and have I got to have a deed in my name within 30 days. And the way you know if you're being scammed with land, if the courthouse don't send you tax documents, sums up. So the courthouse got to send you tax documents. And they sure will because they want their money. I don't think it matters that much. Buy it up under your business, write it off as a business expense, property tax. Write off as a business expense. <laughs> so there we go. So I gave y'all some examples of what you, how you can get into real estate with $1,200. I gave y'all an example how you can get into stocks with $1,200. And I gave y'all an example of how you can pay off your debt and get a guaranteed return on investment. Right? And then also I told y'all why investing is so important about inflation and how inflation moves, the invisible tax, right? And we got Spider-Man in the background. <laughs> so, but anyway, y'all, so and if anybody out there want to support, um, I don't have any more autographed copies to give out. Uh, thanks to everybody that I will, when I restock, I will probably look at doing some autographed copies or whatnot. You know, I probably may get some of those away as a, a gift. I used to do that back in the day. I got to get back into that. But uh, yes, I'm glad to give y'all away some. I might give y'all away some of these investor mugs. You know what? Since y'all on here real late tonight, we're going to do a quick review of Microsoft. Who wants to do a review of Microsoft versus Apple? Not only a review, we're going to look at the reports. We ain't going to go too far, but we're going to go a little, little dive in the reports on Microsoft and Apple. You know what? I'm going to show y'all. Everybody out there, who, when I ask the question on YouTube channel, my Facebook and stuff like that, I asked everybody, how much debt does, who has the most debt, Microsoft or Apple? Everybody like, oh, Apple, Microsoft, Apple, Microsoft, Apple, Microsoft. I don't expect you to know off the top of your head. You could have just easily, I wanted you to look at those financial reports and see what it said for 2019. You know? So here we go. Everybody says, uh. Ms. Bill Scott said, thank you. Have a great night, everyone. Have a great night, everyone. Max B said, us. <laughs> what you got to look up, Wes? He said, I spoke too soon. Apple. So let's, let's look at it real quick. What's up, Wes? All right. Oh, man, you're good, man. Mexico Yeah. All right, so we're gonna do that real quick. Let's do it. We're gonna do. We've been just a little late today. My wife, she's still at work, so um, here we go. We're gonna look at Apple. And also, ladies and gentlemen, for y'all who's on here tonight, I got the confirmation from Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki will be on on May 6th. At, I can't think of the time, but Robert Kiyosaki confirmed to me. We confirmed everything. May 6th, he will be on the show. Apple versus Microsoft, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all ready to go fish? If y'all ready to go fish, hit in the comment box. Let's go fishing. Y'all hit in the comment box, let's go fishing if you're ready to go fish. I'm not going to sit up here and talk about a bunch of jibber-jabber like a lot of people do. I'm going to, like, what I'm about to show you guys, it took me years to figure this out. When I was investing, I used to look at the world of investing is I would look at, uh, when I would look at the world of investing, this is how I would look at investing. I would look at the stock. I would look at the price, right? 
and that would be it. You know what I mean? I would look at the price, the stock, the company, read a couple articles, and that was it. I didn't know nothing about fishing, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all ready to go fishing? Y'all type in the comment box, I'm ready to go fishing. I want to see who's ready to go fishing tonight. I want you guys and girls to interact with me because usually we've been on this thing about an hour and a half. At an hour and a half, point I'm out of here, right? So I know my wife, she gets off in a little bit, so I'm going to get out of here in a little bit. But, you know, I want to ask you guys and girls, tell me y'all ready to go fishing. All right, all right, I see it. Athena said that's her birthday, May 6th. Yes, that's a, if, if all goes well, he's going to be on here live. Uh, Mr. Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is the number one book in the country. Number one personal finance book of all time. Mr. Robert Kiyosaki um, confirmed that he's ready to go on the show. Okay. Michelle says she's ready to go fishing. All right. Miss uh, Butterscott, she always ready to go. Jacina says she, she wants to go fishing. We got Wayne. That's what I'm talking about, Max B. Max B, like, man, I don't want to go fishing. I'm ready to catch some fish, but we're going to do this. Uh, Tropical Portland said, let's go fishing. Let's go Microsoft. Michael said he's ready to go fishing. All right, so let, let's do it then. Y'all in here. I'm in here. You know, my eyes hurt a little bit, so it may be a little hard for me to read on some of this stuff. But let me set up my other screen. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to split it. Um, Here we go. We're going to go to FCC. So I guess we're going to look up up Apple. Okay. All right. So let me share my screen here. No. Uh, the air good one. I'll give me one second. I'm pulling it up here. There we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, here we go. Y'all ready to go fishing? Let's go fishing then. So first place you're going to go, we're going to go to sec.org. Notice we're not going to CNBC. We're not using Yahoo Finance. We're not using anything like that. This is how to use the SEC. If you can read this stuff, this is where the elite level of investors get their information. This is where all the media, all those reports, this is where they're getting it from. The company talks to the SEC. The company doesn't have to report to Yahoo Finance. The company, if you have a publicly traded company, you don't have to report to whoever. You have to report to the SEC, Security Exchange Commission. What? Well, you're too loud, man. So the SEC, Security Exchange Commission, sec.gov. U.S. Security Exchange and Commission, right? So we're going to go here. We're going to go to company filings. Right up in here, we're going to go to company filings. We want to see what has the companies told the SEC. We're going to take Apple. We typed in Apple. These are all the things that come from not Apple. We got to find a company, right? So we're looking at Apple Incorporated. That's the company we're looking for. They got... Apple Beach County, LD, Apple Blossom, Apple Box, Apple Boys, Apple Brooks, all these companies that filed with the SEC. We want Apple Incorporated. Electronic computer, click on that. Now we are here. These are all the filings. This is what Apple has told the Security and Exchange Commission. You learn how to fish, ladies and gentlemen. An 8K report, those are special announcements. We're looking for the 10K. The 10K is the annual report. The 10Q is the quarterly report. So we're going to go down here. This is how we can filter out. I can type in 10-K. Enter. Now, these are all the 10K reports that Apple have filed with the SEC, right? So the latest one they filed 
was October 31st of 2019. That was the last annual report. Now, we can do two things. We can go to Documents. We go to Documents, click on the first one. This is exactly the documents that Apple sent in. Now, you can read through this one, but I'm going to show you all a little fancier way. We're going to kind of use both of them, a fancier way to read it. So you go here, right here where you say Selected Financial Data. Boom. Net income. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these numbers are in millions. So don't look at this and say 260,000. That's 260 billion. Total net sales, uh, total net sales of 200 and, so here we go. They're saying that they had 200 and, they, their money that they made in 2019 was 260 billion. After they paid all their bills, they took a home 55 billion, right? They got dividends on here. All this other good stuff. Like we can go down, like watch this right here. There's a table of contents at. So I can go here and I can go to financial statements and supplementary data. Boom. Financial statements. They can tell me right here. On their products last year, they made $213 billion. I can see where the company's getting this money from. On their services, they made $460 million billion. All their revenue came out to be $260 billion. Now, that's total revenue that came into the company. Now, you know, that, that stuff costs. Just like me, right? I, you may pay $25 for a book. The book has to be printed. It got to be shipped. It got to be all that other stuff like that. By the time I get done, I may take home $5 out of a $25 transaction. Right? That's going to... I have a $5 gross margin. So right here, they made $260 billion. Next, they're telling you um, our cost of goods, our products, it cost us $144 billion. Our services cost us $16 billion. So once you take my revenue, my total net sales, you subtract out my cost, boom, you're going to get how much I brought home once, you know, I paid for the books. That's $900 they made 98 million billion in 2019. Now, that after they brought in 980 billion, they had to pay for research and development, they had to pay sales, general fees, operational fees, all of the good stuff like that, right? So, once they paid all their fees, all they had to pay research and development 16 billion, they had to pay 18 billion in sales, operational, when all said and done, they took a home 55 billion dollars. Right. Next, we stroll down. Comprehensive income statement. <coughs> they brought in fifty five billion dollars. They got changes in foreign services, all the other good stuff like that. Once everything they total comprehensive income, they got fifty six billion. Now we can roll down here. How much cash did they have on hand in twenty nineteen? They had 48 billion in cash, 51 million billion in marketable securities, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable, that means that money that they're supposed to get back. You know, the money they're waiting on to get. The inventory, they made four billion. They vendor non-trademark receipt, four billion. Their total current assets came out to be $162 billion. That's the total current assets that they have on hand. Current means money they can turn into cash within one year. Right, money they can touch. They got 162 billion. That's important because when times get hard, cash is king. And how much cash you can get, that's awesome. You know? I mean, one second. So now they got all their assets. Now, you know, you got to pay money. So once the liabilities, current liabilities, that's money that's due within a year. They got a lot of money that's due within one year. They got their total debt. They got their debt down here, right? Term debt, right? So they got their, their term debt in here. Other non-current well, securities, their total liabilities came out to be $240 billion last year. 
you subtract the total assets, right? Minus the liabilities. That's when you're going to come up with the shareholders' equity. They got a total shareholders' equity of ninety billion. I must have read that wrong. The total assets are three hundred thirty-eight billion. Total assets three hundred thirty-eight billion. Total liabilities are two hundred forty-eight billion. You subtract the two, you're going to come up with the shareholders' equity of ninety billion. That's the network of the company of Apple. Now, this is a little dry. You say, Prince, man, this, man, I, I can't read all that. Man, I ain't that smart, me either. Prince ain't that smart either. These for all my people who like to use a little bit of what you call it. Let me go scan back it up. So when you go here, if you want something a little bit more interactive, go to interactive data. Now when you click on interactive data. This is gonna take all that stuff I was just showing y'all, put it in a nice little pretty thing for you to see. Financial statements. I wanna look at the balance sheets. Boom, all that stuff I was telling you is laid out right here in one page. You got the current assets. You can see the current liabilities. You can see the total assets right here. You can see the total liabilities. And you can see the total shareholders equity right there, all that stuff I was showing y'all. We were looking at the, uh, then we're looking at the, okay. Net sales, cost of sales, that's all right here. You wanna look at the cash flow? Cash flow is right here. You can look at everything you wanna see right here. Now let's take it, let's take it a little step further. Prince, I'm, you know what, that, I don't know what all those numbers mean, man. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of slow, me too. Go to right here, notes to financial statements. Boom. When you go to notes to financial statements, how much debt does this company have? Boom, debt. How much debt? Commercial paper, right? You can read it right here. That's a little small for my eyes. From this, let me write it, make it bigger a little bit. They'll tell you, right? You go down here, this is all the debt, the term debt they got on hand. As of September 28, uh, uh, September 28, 2019, the company has an outstanding floating and fixed rate notes with a very maturity of aggressive of 108 billion. Right? Let me try to make this smaller. I didn't mean to make it that big. But right here is telling you how much debt they got. How many notes they got? 108 billion, right? Long-term debt, $91 billion. So they're telling you the term debt, one-on-one, right? Term, total term debt, $101 billion. So right here, they're telling you down here, where'd you get the $108 billion? billion? As of 2018, 2019, the fair market of value company's notes based on level two is 102.5 billion, 1.35 billion, 1.32 billion respectively. That's where you can see a company's debt, right? You got income taxes. If you wanna look at income taxes of the company, shareholders equity, right? Let's see if y'all got any questions in here, y'all say anything. Everybody's about ready to go fishing. As always, you give great info, Prince. Appreciate it. Uh, go fishing. I just finished washing my hair. I'm glad you are still here. Faith. <laughs> nice, nice. I used to be gone by this time. Tamika Hill says she found it. There you go. Right? This, ladies and gentlemen, I'm showing y'all how you can fish. Now let's go to Microsoft. We want to be able to find Microsoft, right? Let's back it up a little bit. Back it up again. Company name. Did I mess that up? Let me 
typo in there. All right, Microsoft, boom. Second one down. Here we go. I want to find their 10K. I could easily go down here and search it too. I want to look at the interactive data. Right here. Financial statements. Balance sheets. How much cash you got? 11 billion. Total current assets. 175 billion. Right? Total assets, 200, uh, 286 billion is the total assets. You got their total liabilities of 184 billion. Their shareholders equity is 102 billion. I want to see how much debt they have on hand. Boom. They have no short-term debt as of June of last year. Right here it tells you. Everybody's like, well, I don't know who got more debt. Da, 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 da. It's right here. What y'all doing? As of June 30th, 2019, the total carry value of estimated value of long-term debt, including portions, was 72 billion, point two, which I said 73, right? Or 72 billion, 72.3 and 78 billion, respectively. This is all their debt, right? Income statement. Last year they brought in 124 billion. The year before that they brought 110 billion. The year before that they brought 98 billion. So they got growing revenue. Their net income was 39 billion. You can see it right here, net income. So this is when the money came in. This is what it cost with the money. Gross margin. Why is the gross margin so important? People always look at, dang, Prince, you sold a book for $25. You only took home $200. That's not a whole lot of profit margin. Versus if, if I make a YouTube video <coughs> and it takes me five minutes and I make $100 and it didn't cost me nothing to put into it, that's why people pay attention to gross margin. It's a gross margin growing. Look at the gross margin. You know? Then he said, I could tell you, she said, uh, you must work in finance, I can tell what you do. No, I am actually, well, I do in a way, but I don't. I'm in the military. I've been in the military now for 17 years, but I am a command financial specialist. When I've got my MBA, when I've got my MBA, command financial specialist, you know, Series 65, Series 63, life insurance, health insurance, portfolio manager, accredited financial counselor, uh, you know, all type of stuff. So, yeah, I do really love what I'm doing. So now let's get back to it. Now we got revenue. Very, very important. See how the money is coming into the company, how much is going out. So this the money came in. This is what it cost. The gross margin was $82 billion. Now that $82 billion, they had to pay for research and development, sales. Companies that pay a lot of money for research and development is not good. Take Coca-Cola. How much research and development Coca-Cola got to do versus how much re research and development Microsoft got to do? Totally different level. So in that industry, who's spending more money on research and development just to make a profit? Like, take if you own a chewing gum company, how much research and development Wrigley's chewing gum got to do. Not that much. So the less money you have to spend in research and development, the more money that goes into the pockets of the, of the company. So sales and marketing, general administration, operational income, right? Once they did all that operational income, they brought in $42 billion. Then they had to pay the taxes. After they paid the taxes, they walked home with $39 billion last year in 2019, right? My phone is going crazy. <laughs> So once they did the uh, the earnings per share, broken on down, the products, cost of revenue. So there we go. So now you can see what the company is making. We know how much debt that it had. So now when you compare it, when I'm looking through companies. You see my papers? See how they look? One got Apple, one got Microsoft. Look all that writing that's done on it, if you can see that. When I look at it. 
Now I do formulas. I do debt to income ratio. Yes, Apple has more debt, but Apple also has more income. Microsoft has less debt, but Microsoft has less income. So I got to do a debt to income ratio. Apple wins the debt to income ratio. Apple's debt to income ratio is 41%. Microsoft debt to income ratio is 60%, meaning that Apple does, a, it has a lot of debt, but according to its income, it does a better job of managing it. Another thing is when I look at the net income, I look at the net income. Let's say the net income for Apple is for Microsoft. The net income is thirty nine billion. That means that's how much money they bring home every day. After all the bills are paid, they brought in thirty nine billion. And then I look at their total debt. Their total debt is seventy two billion. So I know thirty nine times two, within two years with their net income, they can pay off their debt. That means that their debt is pretty manageable. So that means that they didn't. If they focus on their debt for two years straight, they can pay off their debt. Right <clears throat> now, another thing I look at is the uh, return on assets. Return on asset formula is net earnings divided by total uh, assets. That means that return on um, assets. With your assets, how good are you? How good are you taking your assets and making more money? So when I did the return on assets formula, Apple won in return on assets. Apple won in debt to income, meaning they're doing a better job with debt. Apple has more cash. Apple makes more net income, I meaning they're taking home more money. Total revenue, Apple is bringing more revenue. Microsoft does win with having less debt. Apple had a bigger network. Apple costs $282, Microsoft costs $174. Before the coronavirus, Apple was $327. If if uh, if you brought Apple today and it returned right back to where it was before the coronavirus of $327, that's a 15% return on investment. Microsoft, at its peak before the coronavirus, not its peak, but before the coronavirus, at the peak of the market, it was $184. Today it's $174. If it returns back to where it was, that's 5%. They both pay dividends. They both kind of do the same thing. They're both in the same market. When I look at this and I look at debt, debt, who's managing the debt better, who give me a better return on the assets, who has a total revenue, it's a debt manageable, who has the most cash, all of the good stuff like that. That's where Apple wins the uh, fight. Apple will make it through this. Apple has enough cash that's coming in. They can make it through the coronavirus, right? That's the most important thing. When they make it through this, they're still going to be Apple. Most importantly, when I look at the brand, Apple brand versus Microsoft brand, I think their brand is on par. They're kind of right there. They're both large companies or whatnot. So I give it both to them. But looking at those numbers, that's why I would come up with Apple. Right? Halloween Financials. Prince, let me find out you're a hedge fund manager. <laughs> Man, I wish, man, I wish. Maybe one day. You know what happened? I stayed at the Holiday Inn. I stayed at the Holiday Inn last night, y'all. And ladies and gentlemen, that's how you fish. What I mean by fish, notice. I didn't log into E-Trade. I didn't go on the TD Ameritrade. I didn't go into CNBC, Yahoo Finance. I didn't use Google. I went straight to the SEC, the Security and Change Commission. And I saw what the companies were telling um, trucker. Uh, how you say that? I, Abdullah, what's going on? He said, "Salute, salute to you too." So notice what I mean by fishing. When a person is fishing, that means that they're not all that stuff you see on CNBC, Yahoo. Shout out to all of them for Fox. Shout out to all of them for tuning in. Y'all know the chief, the editor in chief. I'm pretty, pretty good friends with him. He's been on the show a few times, but they're interpreting data, right? And I'm showing you exactly what I was showing you is what Apple said. Now, unless Apple is lying, which is, you know, they can go to jail for that. That's what Apple told the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission. And we just went through what they were doing, right? That's the difference. That's how you fish. 
That's how you go get the data from the source. Now, is there other places you can get it from? You can use Yahoo. You can use CNN, CNBC. You can use uh, E-Trade sometimes, whatever the case may be. But I'm showing you how to get that real, raw data, and it kind of help you with what you're looking at. AAL, is that American Airlines? Against all odds. Also with that, ladies and gentlemen, I showed you guys and girls how Delta, how Delta, the government bet on Delta. Who believes the government bet on Delta? How did the government bet on Delta? I can't speak about American Airlines. Did the government bet on Delta? And if they did, how would you know? Y'all comment and let me know what y'all think. I did a video on this, but probably guys and girls probably didn't catch it. But I'm going to show you where I get this information from. I'm going to show y'all something, how to fish, why fishing is important. Where's Delta Airlines at? Where's Delta Airlines? Where you at, Delta? There you go. Oh, there you go, right there. Trying to hide from me a little bit, but I got you. I'm going to go through the financial notes and pull this up for y'all. Tucker said he saw the video. Trucker said he saw the video. Michael said the warrants. The government did bet on Delta and will make a pretty penny in the process because Delta has a loyal following. I'm one of them. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you guys. If y'all already saw the video, for the people who didn't see the video, I'm going to show y'all right here in the same data. Oh, I ain't, let me share my screen here. Um, here we go. Right here, I just pulled the internet interactive data on this time, and it'll tell you right here where I got the highlight. Warrants issue price U.S. dollars twenty four dollars and thirty nine cent over the next five years. Right here, they tell you they got $5.4 billion from the government. They tell you we got $5.4 billion. $3 billion went to payroll. $3.8 billion went to payroll. $2.7 billion is a grant <laughs> that they just got from the government. They got to pay back $1.6 billion. That's the debt instrument. That's what they got to pay back. In return for this, The government can buy 6.5 million shares. The government can buy 6. million shares of Delta for $24.39 within the next five years. That's right here, ladies and gentlemen, sec.gov. Now notice nobody has reported that information. Everybody said warrants. Some people kind of mentioned it, but they didn't say the price of the warrants or whatnot. So how can you get in on this? You can buy call options on Delta for $25 within a year, or two years, or whatnot, or whatever the case may be. So a warrant is the government has the option to be able to buy. They don't have to. They got the option to be able to buy 6.5 million shares. 
adult. Blaine Kong said the government bailed out Delta in exchange for Delta giving the government stock in the company. No, they're not giving the government stock. The government has warrants. That means that the government has the right. They don't have the, they don't have the stock. That means that they have the right. They're just taking a page out of Warren Buffett's book. Prince, what happened to RS and options? For example, USO is scheduled to have an RS 0.1 ratio on May 9th and a purchaser. Uh, reverse split? Ooh. Dervin Smith, man, I don't want to get into it. Dervin Smith, man, I don't want to get into uh Let's do the math. I don't want to, I don't want to get into reverse splits right now. <laughs> we'll do that another time. I want to stay on topic right here. So let's say the government, let's say if Delta goes back to where it was, how much was Delta on February 12th? Delta was about $60, right? If Delta goes back to $60, if Delta goes back to $60 within the next five years and the government exercises their warrants, the government would make profit. They would profit $231 billion. If Delta goes back to $60 within the next five years, which was this high in September, in February, February, I think it was in September, it would make $231 billion. Off of $5 billion. They gave Delta 5.4, but Delta got to pay back 1.6. So they gave Delta about $4 billion. If Delta does what it's supposed to do and go back to $60 per share, the government can profit $231 million. Billion. Million. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. They would get $231 million. Right? Does this mean the government is going to stack the deck in their favor as much as they've done, i.e. policy, tax cuts, or what? They have an invested interest in Delta doing well. Now, I haven't read about Southwest Airlines and American. I haven't read in those companies, right? But I'm just telling you guys and girls from Delta. I don't know if American has reported. Has America reported yet? Here we go. Let's look it up. I'm on one this afternoon. It's Sunday. Now we're going to look at American Airlines. Oh, they haven't reported yet. They haven't reported yet, so I can't look up American. I mean, they haven't reported their quarterly earnings. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I thank y'all. Hopefully y'all got some from that. Did y'all enjoy the fishing lesson? Fishing lesson? Lesson? Or fishing trip? Did y'all enjoy the fishing trip? Y'all let me know. Did y'all enjoy the fishing trip that we went on with Apple and Microsoft? A little light fishing trip, nothing too crazy. I definitely did. I definitely did taking y'all on this trip a little bit. These are things that took me years to realize. I didn't know what financial reports were. I didn't know how to get them. I used to just look at the news and read an article here or there and look at the price of the stock and make my assumption. You know what I mean? That's what I used to do. Now it took me years to realize. It took me years to, you know, financial reports and where to get them from and when do they come out and how do they come out? What do they mean? What does that tell you about the company? So now you guys are going away from speculating, and now you get into investing. A speculator, somebody be like, hey, man, you know what? Let me, let me put something on it. I used to do that. I mean, you know what? How much that cost? Five cents? This is why I tell people you should not have more than 10 stocks in your portfolio. 
If you don't know the revenue, gross profits, how can you know that? One guy, shots out to B, B sent me 200 shares in a portfolio and said, Prince, what do you think? I was like, I don't even know you. I don't even know if you know what you think. You know? Like, Beef, you don't even know what you're talking about. I'm like, Beef, you don't even, I don't even think you know what's in your portfolio. Do you know the gross profits? Do you know the net income? Do you know everything about these companies? Do you use these companies? Like, nah, man, I heard about. So that's why I'm, if you narrow your portfolio down to 10 companies that you knew very well. Look at it, ladies and gentlemen. This was hangs up in my office. You see, I built a paper called Microsoft. Look at all that stuff. You know, all this stuff here. Y'all want to go into my folder of notes? Prince, how you know so much? I could flip. <laughs> how you know so much, Prince? <laughs> flip. <coughs> flip all day, just notes, right? So here we go. Let me see what y'all said. Blink Kong said, absolutely. I'm glad y'all enjoyed the fishing trip. Max B said, yes, I'm going to watch the playback twice. And you're going to get more. We're going to do more. Miss Butterscott said, yes. Jensen said, yes. Clean fishing, no worms. Nice, nice. Think about it. People look at it. These companies are making billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. Is it right? Is it wrong? I'm just looking, what can I do for me and my family? What can I do to help out Wesley, help out my wife, help out myself, change the uh company around stuff like that or whatnot so yes that's the way i look at it they said awesome thank you michael said the entire show fishing included was wicked thank you <laughs> toronto canada in the house nice you know i did a show with a guy in toronto i think he was in toronto man the guy had like a i, I never even published this episode i need to go back and do that i had a fade in there you know, my hair was all crazy. I need to go back and do have built like a four hundred million dollar company, real estate. Some I think it was in Toronto. I need to get back on that. I need to put that episode out. Blaine Khan said, "Thank you, Prince." Miss Butterscotch said, "Thank you." And also, ladies and gentlemen, um, Tropical Portland said, "Yes, I was wrong about Apple. It's better. I just like Android phones. Put your feelings aside." I love Macs. I'm an Apple person. But if Microsoft better, I'm going to go get Microsoft. I don't care. I'm not loyal to the car. If you're on the struggle bus, I don't want to be on it. I have gotten into so many struggle buses hoping they would get it together. And it's just like a relationship. For guys and girls, whatever you're into, if a guy or a girl is a train wreck and you want to fix them and you want to get them right, oh, I'm going to help them go to school. I'm going to help them get their dreams. I like, I'm like. i too old for that, man. I'm 35. You know, when I was 20 years old, I used to listen to people's dreams and be like, oh, you know, one day I want to be a such and such. At 35, I need you to be saying, I'm here now. I'm trying to get there. I'm not trying to get into the struggle. Everybody's struggling. Everybody just hurting. Everybody down. I'm not trying to get into that situation. I'm not trying to do business with companies that are barely afloat, barely holding on. I'm getting to the ones that are winning. Wayne said, yes. He said, I got to watch the replay. Cool, cool. Uh, I'll watch it again. The replay going to come out late. It's usually come out late. they doing that. He said, we we caught the big kahuna. Nice, nice, nice. He said, I missed the first part. We'll watch again. Nice. He said, I will buy Delta if it was paying dividends. And that's also, if you take money from the government, you can't pay dividends. So all those companies, Delta does pay dividends. Southwest does pay dividends. Once they start, once they cut, the dividends, I mean, once they take the money from the government, they cannot pay a dividend until September 21. Because that doesn't make sense. The government gives you money and you're paying investors. Congress didn't like that. So they cannot pay dividends. You shouldn't be paying dividends anyway. You should be keeping that money trying to get the company back up. So, yeah, anybody, any airline company that takes money from the government cannot pay dividends for like a year and a half or something like that. That's one of the catches of doing that. So I'm glad y'all enjoyed the fishing trip, right? Thank y'all. I'm about to get out of here way past my time. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. 
And uh, I hope y'all have a great Saturday. I'll probably see y'all tomorrow. We got a big week coming up. The MAGA is reporting. The FANG is reporting. The MAGA is Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and Apple. The FANG is Facebook, Apple, Netflix, and Google. And they put another N in there, too. Netflix and somebody, I thought they put another N in there. What was the other N? Netflix and whatever. I'm kind of burnt. Big week. So I'll probably be on it tomorrow. Should I watch Mr. First Part? All right, cool. Exactly. I'm not loyal to any company if they're losing out on me because the company ain't going to be loyal to me. So the company's doing good and the story looks good, the money looks right, I'll make an investment into you. The moment you ain't doing it, you what you call it, you know? But y'all have a good night. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Yeah. Oh, there's two A's, not two N's. Facebook, as you got it right, Max B. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. So, all right, y'all have a good night. We're you know, two hours behind y'all. Have a good evening, good night, whatnot. Appreciate it. Enjoy y'all. And and to the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe. Peace, be safe. I'm out. Thank you.